Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Nehemiah chapter 7 verse 9, Obadiah chapter 1 verse 5, and James chapter 2 verse 6. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for another day. Thank you for your help, your strength, your mercy, God. Forgive us for all of our sins. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Um, Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 9. The sons of Shepatiah, 372. All right. And so... Um, the this was speaking about the the sons of each of the families um that left of the men that left and went into bondage and now they were coming back home right and so we know that they multiplied in bondage they they um were still in families but the, these were the sons of Shephatiah and so all of the relatives of Shephatiah um were 372 and so it says um Shephatiah means the lord that judges all right, so the Lord that judges, and then um, the number 372 in the Strong's Concordance means intermission, cessation, rest of any motion, business, or labor. All right, you guys, so this one, I I felt like Holy Spirit was saying, this is the rest that is coming. This is the cessation that is coming. Um, this is foreshadowing of it coming. And it says the son of Shepatiah. Shepatiah means um, the God, the Lord that judges. And so um, when we think about it, you know, um, Christ is the one who is appointed judgment. The father gave him that duty um, as one of his, uh, one of the things that he would do. And so Christ is going to judge this world, right? It is soon to come. Um, it is, um, not long after that rest, right? Not long after that cessation, um, that judgment is going to come and be poured out. All right. And so we know that Christ is that. And so it says the sons of Shepatiah 372. And so, um, and we we want to realize that, you know, Christ is soon to return. There is a rest. And you know what? We're going home because that's what what this was about. Right. When you were stating the name of your forefather um, and, and the children that came with you, you were, you know, taking staking your claim. You were entering into your homeland. You were entering into your rest. Amen. And so that's what we're going to be doing is entering into our rest. All right. For them, it was more like a cessation, but for us, it will be a rest, which is another meaning for it. All right. And so the second verse that the Lord gave me was Obadiah chapter five. If thieves came to you, if plunderers came by night, how you have been destroyed. Would they not steal only enough for themselves? If great gatherers came to you, would they not, would they not have? leave gleanings all right and so this is actually speaking of um Ephraim um Edom I mean um remember Jacob and Esau were brothers and the children of Esau was Edom right and so um here is speaking about the betrayal that Edom um had done to Israel remember um how um, they, they did not, um, stand for them when the enemy came in, right? It says, if these came to you, if plunderers came by night, how you have been destroyed. All right. And so that is just speaking of the fact that, um, you know, they, they did not care anything about those who were in need, which were their own brothers and cousins, right? It says, if these came to you, if plunders came by night, 
how you have been destroyed would they not steal only only enough for themselves and so um even a thief would leave behind what he doesn't want right if he only is coming for the tv because that's his hot ticket item then he's going to get the tv and everything else for the most part unless he finds something more valuable you know he is he, that is his you know thing and so it says uh, would they not steal only enough for themselves and then this next one says, if great gatherers came to you, would they not leave gleanings? And so um, if a great gatherer or owner of a field left behind things for um, the poor, they were doing that intentionally a lot of times, right? And so that is what um, this is speaking about because Edom's sin was so... Uh, I mean, Edom's sin against Israel was so blatant, right? And they're turning uh, their backs on the children of Israel. And so um, the the they the, their fate was that they were wiped out, right? Not long after that, they were um, just completely wiped out as a city and so um, as a people. And so it's our job to just stand firm in faith, right? When the enemy is coming in, when um, something is trying to uproot us, we have to realize that Christ is with us. God is with us. Even when those who would have helped us turn their backs on us, we have to know that Christ is with us. Amen. All right, you guys. And so the third verse that the Lord gave me was James chapter two, verse six. But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? All right. And so um, this is speaking about the lack of concern um, for those who are poor, who are destitute, who are in poverty. Right. Um, it says, but you have dishonored the poor man. All right. And so um, this part is is speaking of the fact that they didn't have a concern right instead of um of helping them honoring them um being concerned for them instead they they dishonored the poor man right they ignored the poor they they turned their backs on the poor and 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 they pretended as if you know people um deserved what it was that was going on with them and so it says um it says are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court and so um we know that that is even true today right that that you know when you are let me see when you are in an accident or something maybe you have gotten into an accident um you know it's it's the people who are already riding around in the lexus right and then they're the ones that are also you know trying to sue people and it seems like every other radio commercial is about a litigious lawsuits right there's always something and so you know that is you know the times we live in you're not going to get into an accident in jesus name we're not saying that and so you know it says, but you have dishonored the poor man. So instead of helping him, we're people are favoring one another and, and preferring the company of one another, but not um not in a way that is because of their virtues, but because of their money, because of their riches, because of the money and the wealth that they have. All right. And so it says, um, yeah, let, let's look back at this previous verse, Obadiah 1 5. It says, If the thieves came to you, if the plunders came by night, how you would have been destroyed, right? Um, because God's hand was not um, blessing them anymore. God was going to make them pay for what they did. It says, Would they not only steal enough for themselves? So even a thief would. Um, would have some mercy right and so it says if great gathers came to you would they not leave gleanings 
um if a if a gatherer doesn't leave gleanings is is something going on inside of him right because it's easy to leave gleanings you just keep moving forward and not being thorough and diligent you leave something back for others and so um you know if he does not leave um gleanings then that means there's something going on right he he is choosing to not help other people and so God sees that, right? God God knows that. God knows when Ephraim turned their back. God knows when Ephraim was trapping the children of Israel and sending them back into bondage, right? Um, instead of helping them as their brethren. And so, you know, it says um, that, that if they, well, it's, I'm not going to read that again. I'm just going to say that, you know, if we don't show care and concern for those who are in need, then we, how can you expect to enter the rest, right? We need to enter into this rest. We need to enter into this, this blessed place, right? This cessation. But if you were never doing anything anyway, how would you ever expect to enter into a rest when you were never in a state of, of work, Right. So we need to ask God for forgiveness and we need to allow God to move on our hearts um, for the poor, for the people who are in need, the people who are are not um, in a position to speak for themselves. Um, because while we were yet sinners, Christ died, we were at a disadvantage at one point too, but somebody cared enough to share the gospel with us, right? So in that same way, we need to be willing to give to others in the name of Jesus, share the gospel if possible. But regardless, um, you know, we need to help others um, and put them first. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for showing us that arrest is coming, a judgment is coming. Um, and we say thank you for that. Lord God, forgive us for all of our sins. Jesus, help us to walk uprightly before you, Lord God. Help us to help the poor. Help us to um, do everything that we need to do in order to bless um, and, and touch the lives of other people who are in need. We love you and we give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again from the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys. If you um have prayed that prayer and you have believed that prayer, Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. Meaning he is going to show you the way and he's going to bless your path. One of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. All right. And so um, also don't forget to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed. Yeah.